Within the Futureverse community, we've had a lot of different assets and it's interesting growing through a brand new chain. And so sometimes there's not a whole lot of resources. And when there was a Prism Mint, which people got several of them, sometimes upwards of hundreds, and you have to match them with these land plots or it's assumed so, everybody's like, oh my goodness, we have no idea how to do this. This is gonna take forever. How do we begin? And then our savior comes from the sky, believings, drop in the app, Give us kind of a lowdown of how you've seen the progress of the root network and when you've said, hey, I have the skill set to make some tools and there's a lot of people that need these tools. Yeah, thanks so much uh, first for having me. Uh, really uh, glad to be here. Thanks for hosting. And uh, yeah, the just like you say, uh, it was a mess on how to map everything, how to find out like what do I need, what is good. Not uh, only for the Third Kingdom, but even for like all games around um, the racers, for example, or the brains. And um, I mean, I just continued the another legend uh, around the prawns and the prawns tooling. And I think there have been several um, of, uh, of amazing community built tools. And yeah, then I was sort of at the point of where I thought, OK, uh, I have lots of cards. I have the land. How do I find out what I need, what I have? And so, yeah, everything started with a with a local script. I generated like some Excel sheets, shared it with some people, and people were like, "I want that as well." Um, and yeah, the rest is history. And for yourself, I mean, going specifically to the root network, do you remember how you found out about it? The first person you heard it from, or kind of the initial rumblings? You mean back at the Fluff World Mint? Yeah, because that's the thing, right? Is for anybody that's coming to the community a little bit later, you kind of forget sometimes that this started with having no idea what the scope was going to turn into. Yeah, it was uh, Fluff World um, back in, what was it, August 2021, uh, three years now. Um, and uh, back then I minted lots of projects uh, and uh, Fluff World was one of them. And uh, it, it, piqued my interest when because it was different to uh, everything else uh, everything else was 2d cartoon uh images and fluffer was one of the few ones even though many would call it the ugly rabbits um i thought it is a uh, novel to have 3d animated uh sound backgrounds swap uh, the the ability to swap things so all of it looked very novel. So I made some more research and liked what I saw. And, and now you're here building for it. And it takes, you know, it takes a lot of, uh, how would I word it? It takes a lot of conviction, I guess, to build these. Like how, how difficult is it to build something? Because I mean, you brush it off. You're like, oh, you know, I just whip this thing in an Excel and then it's good. And people found it useful. And I was like, I don't know if I know how to like use Excel in the basics of terms. And so how did you, how did you figure mm. out all of this stuff? Like how long does it actually take to build out these tools? So maybe my background, uh, a little bit on that. I'm a UX designer, um, but also learned coding. And, but we like in our agency um, that we have, we don't sell my services um, on the coding, but more on the UX and the design. So I would c consider myself a hobby coder. And there I have some knowledge around Node.js, Python, and uh, and these languages. And with that and the combination of uh, some some ChatGPT help, uh, I was able to put together the script, run it, um, get the data, um, get it from the API, um, and then uh, yeah, turn it into an Excel. So it is some work uh, for sure. Um, the foundation of coding knowledge was helpful. Um, and then putting it together, together like the, the bigger work is to put it into a proper web platform. And so that's where the new website comes out, because before anybody that's gone into the tool, it's kind of just a, a nicer version of a spreadsheet, I guess, where you're going to put in your info and it'll it'll kind of calculate, populate everything that you need. And so what's coming with this new website? What can people expect? Is this all free to use? Is there going to be a membership at all? Yeah, so um, right now the prototype is live and it will also actually stay live um, because uh, I'll get to that in a bit. Um, the new site, um, we have developed that with a bigger team um, with the agency and actually also a few devs um, where we now have a future pass login. We have an R RNS integration. We have our own database, our own front end, our own back end. So everything custom made, custom platform. Um, that's definitely more work than just a little script uh, uh, putting it into an Excel. 
and there we are starting off uh, i will post the link um, later on on x um and so people can have uh yeah can can have a look around we're kicking things off with a new version of racers um the choice was for racers because there is lots of data to analyze with all these cards top speed acceleration and so on um even though it might not have the biggest uh, uh user base currently um but uh, for the third kingdom the only thing you can do is map prisms to to land um so we said okay third kingdom is out a little bit racers is live now um let's do that first and then later on um build build third kingdom um the platform is free uh for now um we don't want to make it paid um at least in this beta stage like now we're moving from prototype to web app with uh, proper development um but uh um, it won't be um a paid paid uh, version in in the next weeks i would say so uh, for now you can use it for free and uh, yeah that's uh very excited about uh, getting people uh, getting people's hands on on the new platform it seems like it's going from just kind of a simple idea to something much more and so do you guys have kind of a vision of this obviously future versus talked repeatedly of you know these grand visions talking about ai blockchain and being this revolutionary technology but at the same time you know if they are launching 506 different games it's all these user generated things i'm looking at you guys and i'm like how do you scale that? How do you be on top of it? Obviously, competition is going to come at some point. So, I mean, are you starting to really take this a lot more seriously with all of this now? Yeah, for sure. Um, the vision is definitely, when I looked at it, um, I saw demand. Uh, I saw people using the products. I saw people being excited about having, like, in, even just the initial prototype. And there I said to myself, following... Futureverse, Readyverse, Ready Player One, uh, looking at the Oasis, uh, to be the first gaming analytics tool in the Oasis, if we make that um, comparison, uh, will be very valuable. And uh, that means the way we approach it is that we rather think in blueprints. Um, so that means in our case, uh, we have now, like, the, the the magic is not necessarily that we have racers now. The magic is more that we have our own backend with the query set up, with um, uh, scripts checking who has which asset. Um, and once there is another racing game, we have the whole infrastructure, um, just like, you know, Atom cars also have the same things with acceleration, top speed, uh, influence, and so on. We can't swap parts yet, but I'm just waiting for the announcement that we can swap atom parts, to be honest, because the background metadata, what you see in the future pass, there is more if you go to the metadata URL. Um, and so it's all ready to be like, okay, now you can swap everything. Um, if that comes sooner or later, I don't know. But um, the any racing game that comes we can we can build for that and then let's we let's look at third kingdom any strategy like once we have uh, the third kingdom in that new infrastructure any new strategy farming game we can use that blueprint or that template and then we're actually also in talks with uh, certmon to look at their game and see how can we integrate it into gambai and once there's another trading, trading card game we can use that template so that's like the broader vision of we're now here yes racers is a proof of concept game but we will have proper racing games and they will need similar infrastructure when i first saw that there was kind of a bigger partnership kind of for gambai and i saw this craft clarity as arcadia made an announcement the other day that they're partnered together can you explain what craft clarity is is that game by what i know you just touched on kind of the the, the zertmon obviously there's arcadian all these different things uh with trade verse as well how how do you kind of foresee like the partnership realm if you can explain that but first uh with the craft clarity please craft clarity is uh an agency that i co-founded with a few others uh in 2021 and since 2021 we've been building different um projects uh it is an agency helping clients so if you are a company that needs help with digital transformation, that needs a website, that it needs uh, 
wants to understand all the new emerging uh, emerging technologies like Web3, blockchain, AI, and so on, and what does that mean for my company? Like that's where we help and we are active like in the energy sector, in FinTech, we've built like an AML solution. Um, we have um, one client is in, in agriculture. So across uh, German SMEs mostly, but also internationally did like a, an NFT mint with uh, UNICEF or like Giga um, where we, that was in 2022, I think, where we had uh, collected money to raise funds to connect schools with the internet. So that's Drive Clarity. We're a small team of builders um, um, helping companies. And here and there, we do our own small ventures and projects. Uh, for example, Batesia, the Snotward Seals Christmas Advent Calendar, uh, maybe some of you will remember that one, which was uh, lots of fun. Um, and so, yeah, here and there, we do like our own ventures without having a client and Gamba is definitely one of them and like you mentioned uh with arcadia the partnership announcement uh, which we are also very excited about um where we will help them with their web app and um help uh to build build it out so they can focus on uh what what they are good at with the games uh, and and arcade and they also do like more more stuff um, but the 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 web app, um, yeah, we will take care of that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, if there's any, because now we have like also that template around future pass login RNS integration that up is getting a collection, the ownership and stuff. So that means like if there's also another Futureverse project that needs similar has similar requirements where they want, okay, I want people to be able to log in RNS database ownership and so on. We can now relatively quickly spin this up um, and build like a locked in exclusive area for people. I want to get a little bit into fluff world in the future verse here, if I can. So um, sure. you're rocking the cool cat profile picture. What did you think of the uh, cool cat surreal estate? when it was mm -hmm. showcased the other day. I think the art for the different um, partner collections, and probably you're talking about the, where the cool cat walks around in that comic land thing. Yeah, uh, I really liked it. Like it was, uh, it was different. It was like- uh, It was a vibe. It had like a very, it was, like it yeah. had a vibrance to it that I don't, <laughs> it feels like one yeah, of those yeah. specially animated uh, movies, but it was a game. Especially when you look at the, let's say the the Third Kingdom renderings of the characters, like including the cool cuts, uh, you would expect to have a surreal estate that is just like this three D cool cut in the look of that three D, let's say high res normal Unreal Engine look, um, but then you have like suddenly this, uh, yeah, like this vibe. It's like difficult to describe this comic look. I don't know. How to how to describe it so um and if that like automatically uh is possible with a different uh with the different partnership communities i mean like i was stunned by the doodles uh third kingdom surreal escape uh which looked crazy and then uh it adjusts the art style depending on which surreal escape you're you have and then if you think about okay cool cats so real estate looks like this how does the doodles uh surreal estate look if uh, that's coming which i guess at some point so yeah i i think that's exciting to see how how they have managed to integrate the art style now most of it has been teasers but the one thing that i do want to give a lot of credit to is it seems like it's extraordinarily high quality in terms of graphics for everything we've seen for the third kingdom obviously it's not you know massively graphically intense of what's going on but it looks extraordinarily clean for the readyverse trailers the environments themselves look really nice and for the stronghold that aaron posted a while ago i thought that all looked you know good quality where I think there's been a lot of conversations around pixel art versus, you know, just kind of something generic versus high fidelity. And we have all these comparisons that are going across the space right now, but what's your take on just what the team's showing right now? 
Uh, I think, like, uh, of course, uh, the bench is noteworthy here. <laughs> um, uh, I think that was uh, definitely uh, uh, one of the highlights. Um, <laughs> And uh, but I think like in in general, um, I, I like that they tease things. Of course, it is uh, let's say it is an actual tease because you're like, okay, I want to play it. I want to get my hands on it. I want to you know play the Third Kingdom, go into open, go into surreal estates. So um, that's I think the the challenge will be if you're looking at games that are launching right now, they all have that Unreal Engine look. Uh, like because it's so easy to build with Unreal Engine, um, and it is high quality, and it is it won't be um, the the secret sauce to the project won't be that it is an Unreal Engine game. Like it will be much more how will Ernest Klein be able to 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 build stories into that universe? Um, how will Ready Player One will it feel like? A natural, authentic integration of Ready Player One IP and the rest of the IP that they want to integrate from traditional movies and brands. Um, will that feel natural? Uh, how, will it capture people's attention? How will they be able to get the Web two community? Even though I'm like um, always a bit hesitant to use this Web three, Web two dif differentiation because in the end it's everything's just one but uh let's say traditional gamers who always have been super skeptical about blockchain um how will they address that um so like that will be the uh, many challenges uh and how they could also stand out if you look at the cool cats or real estate to not just have the unreal engine look but to have ip um a look according to the ip to how does this world look the cool cats look like this and then you have that shader or like that that look and then that for every ip so they don't lose like their what's special about any ip to have their look and i think if they can bridge that with all these games um then then it can be a magical place yeah so during the South by Southwest conference, I, I tweeted a clip the other day. I'm not sure if you got a chance to see it, but it was Ernest Klein talking about the Readyverse standard. And, you know, as you just mentioned, if you have some kind of IP, you can bring it onto our platform and use it on our standard. And obviously that just is trying to highlight the, the onboarding method for people that have something that they truly want to build uh, through, I guess, the streamlined process. So what does that mean to you when they talk about a Readyverse standard? Um, so I haven't seen the clip, but I'm just um, going on of uh, assumptions around the whole process. Um, so I think it will be, um, it's important that they build out the, um, the builders onboarding. And because right now um, it is a bit lacking, to be honest. Um, just on the, um, just as one example, they, I like the ASM vision paper, like the direction it's going, because uh, that makes it much more natural. Uh, if I have to explain to people, you have to buy a brain first before you can play racers, they'll be okay, bye. So, I think it will the 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 strategic direction is a good one on on ASM, leaving out all um, thoughts around what is with ASM Gen One holders. Will they have? Um, will there be enough value in it? But just looking from a company's perspective and a technological strategic, I think it makes sense. But there is no information how to integrate it yet. Uh, so I like the vision paper. I can't integrate it because there's no docs on it yet. Uh, I know they are on it, you know, like also I asked like in the root network discord and I, um, expect there will be, uh, a much more improved onboarding process. And when you say the ready verse standard, um, to, to make it easy to get in there to get it, make it easy for developers, to make it easy for IP, um, to get to get in there. Um, I think it will always need some, you know, custom 
development, custom game design, uh, thinking about how does this, how does this, how does, how is my IP um, presented in the Readyverse? Because I also remember I was working on a virtual reality project uh, 2018 where a uh, major German telecommunications brand wanted to make a social virtual reality thing. And I did lots of research around it. And there, uh, the brands were like, I want, let's say it's a shoe brand. I want my, it, I want to I want it to look like a physical store. And I'm like, why would you, it's so boring. Like, what, what, no one will go there. Why would I go to a store that looks like, like in virtual, that looks like reality? And uh, what doesn't make sense. And so uh, I think if brands are able to understand the potential of virtual worlds, there is no physics unless you say there is physics. Um, and there is so much potential, I think, around it um, that we will see see uh, nice applications if they properly think about it. Take this any way you want. What do you think about the metaverse? I mean, by now we're so, uh, let's say, in the Futureverse community framed by the definition of Aaron and Shara, um, which I have started to agree, but I think it's a big, big um, endeavor to reframe the word in the whole world's mind because the people made up Many people made up their opinion about ah the metaverse. I don't want to be in glasses, you know, while run around in virtual worlds. I want to be in reality. Uh, so I think the metaverse can can be a nice place if we are able to change that, like how people see it. Um, that it is uh, also just us hanging out on Twitter. Oh, X and in spaces and having digital identities like that's where it starts and uh, then then I think uh, the metaverse is uh, it's just the evolution of the internet but um, before I repeat Aaron and Shara's words uh, yeah I, th I, I, I would say I agree with their definition circling back to Gamba is there any final things you want people to remember potentially follow be on top of be aware of uh, yeah for sure, there is uh, the uh, the Discord will be opened uh, very soon. Um, the website is uh, live. I will share the link so people can play around with it. I would love feedback around it. Uh, if you find something, there might be some final smaller visual uh, bugs around it, but it should all work. You should get all your assets. Um, if you don't. Um, uh, yeah, just let us know in the Discord. We have a support uh, ticket functionality, uh, so you can uh, report it there. And maybe one final teaser, even though um, I'm saying the the platform itself will be free while it is like in this alpha beta mode. Uh, of course, we are we need money to build it with our employees, um, with uh, the devs. And there might be a mint coming up. But currently, we structured it in a way that it is a early supporters mint that is not connected to utility on the platform and instead gives people something back as an artwork that is... Uh, special and the first type of its kind on the root network and we hope that the funds uh for through that mint um will be we will use that for gambai we also want to look into other developer tooling that we can support the builders maybe even build some smaller tools for the community so I wouldn't necessarily say it is a Gambai utility mint, but rather a 
mint that gets you uh you might want to look up generative art if you haven't uh looked into it yet um i will also make like a series around that how how it works in in the next days or weeks and then use that to continue to to build everything out that we have in mind um, which might be gamba which might be other uh, projects um, and yeah but i think that's enough of a teaser around that well appreciate you coming on and uh yeah thanks everybody for watching